So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another album review of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host, Hector. And today we're going to talk about the album Shellac and To All Trains. And I'm talking about this album because basically this was Steve Albini's band. And this was their last record that came out two weeks after his passing. So for those of you that do not know who Steve Albini was, he was a engineer he reluctantly called himself a record producer but he's known that you know he did the pixie surfer rosa but perhaps his most famous record that he worked on was nirvana in utero and i use i own this one on vinyl and this is the 2014 mix which is the steve albini mix so this is a very true record for steve albini and i love it so i gotta be honest with you uh I never listened to Shellac before, so I didn't know the sound of the band. Uh, once Steve Albini died, I knew he had a band. I'm like, I, well, I gotta listen to this and I gotta talk about his final record and the legacy that Steve Albini uh, brought to a lot of like rock music because the way he recorded, like especially the drum sound and, and, and he captured the essence of bands raw, like unpolished, like. The, he brought the like in utero sounded so different from Nevermind that he really had a talent for that. And he also did countless of records. Uh, I'm telling you, if you go on Wikipedia and you look up the many records that Steve Albini worked on, it's quite impressive. So uh, Shellac is really like a noise rock, garage rock band. They're a trio. And this album has 10 tracks and it's 28 minutes. So it's a short record. And I gotta say that uh, musically, you know, this isn't exactly my cup of tea. You know, like uh, the vocals, sometimes uh, Steve Albini does a lot of like those spoken word type of vocals. Like uh, it, it reminded me of something that Henry Rollins also did with the Rollins band. And I'm not a huge fan of those spoken word part uh, songs. Like he does it here. There's a song called Tattoos and most of the song uh, he's like talking to you and uh, also Lou Reed did, did something like this and I'm not a huge fan of that but it's interesting you know uh, the lyrics on this album they're kind of grim uh, for example on a song called Wednesday uh, it's a uh, musically you know it's very garage rock uh, good bass on it uh, and at the end he's talking about like someone like killing themselves on like over a kitchen sink on a Wednesday. And he does that at the end of the song, like a spoken word, it's pretty eerie. Uh, then you have a song called Scrapers, and that was like more punk rock attitude. Uh, very short songs, like almost two minutes, one minute and a half. Days are dogs. I also thought it was interesting, but he has some longer tracks like uh, I Don't Fear Hell, which closes the album. It's like a four and a half minute track, and it's that was pretty like frantic in nature it brings it feels like very much like a punk rock song but slower at times and he's all about saying that if he's going to hell he's going to know everyone so that, that's why he doesn't fear it and then you have songs that are kind of funny like scabby the rat which is all about like like a, a big huge rat and it's plastic so it's the lyrics can be kind of like uh I don't know, not too serious at times. Uh, also, you have a song like Girl From Outside, Chic New Wave. And you know, the album seems like it's it's not an album that I, I, I think it's, it's uh, some songs are like more serious, but others are, are like kind of like uh, goofy, but you know, the production sounds great. Steve Albini obviously captures the raw sound of bands. Do I say that I love every track on this record? No, I do not. You know, uh, I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't know the band as well. So I think that maybe I got to get into more of their old stuff and listen to it to see how it uh, it compares to this album. But this album is, you know, it's, it's not a bad record. Maybe it's not just my cup of tea, but there's some things here musically that I enjoy. I think the playing is like simplistic, but to the point and does the job but the production everything sounds crisp everything sounds like a a band playing live so i think it has that steve albini sound so steve albini as a singer uh it's you know it's like a punk rock type of singing and 
he has those like spoken words that are very prevalent on this album on a lot of the tracks so uh so yeah to me to all trains you know this is an album that obviously if you uh, i respect steve albini i think he was a great engineer producer and obviously musician he know he knew how to get the right sound from bands do i do, do i think this this album is like a classic album no you know it's Definitely, it definitely has its ups and downs. It's not a perfect record, but it's also not a bad record. So, uh, if you're a fan of Steve Albini, you should check Shellac out. And I'm going to listen to more of their older stuff to see how it compares. So, I want to know from you, Couchers, what do you think of To All Trains by Shellac? Uh, what is your favorite Steve Albini record that he played on, or he produced, or engineered? Tell me in the comments. And Finally, thank you, Steve Albini, for all the music you will be missed. So if you like the videos that I'm putting out, do not forget to subscribe and do not forget to give me a like. That helps me with the YouTube algorithm to get to more people like yourself. So until next time, people, this is Hector, the Shield Dude on a Couch, and I'll see you all right here on the couch. Thank you and goodbye.